All right, all right, all right. Here we go back again on the other side of the coin. Oh, my days. Oh, my days. Oh, man. It is mayhem, ladies and gentlemen. It is absolutely mayhem. Um, it, it, all I'm going to say, you guys are going to have a brilliant, brilliant show here. We're going to talk about everything, collate everything together, um, everything that's been happening. We're going to put it together. You know, we we're going to talk about, you know, what <laughs> Jan Arge Foytov's stream with uh, Fabrizio Romano, which was literally a nothing stream. But there were a few things that was interesting. But then some Hala news came in this morning albeit from Sky Sports, whether it's true or not, I don't know. And then out of nowhere, David Einstein. Uh, I mean, you know, it's like the RKO from the WWE, from Randy Orton, just laid the RKO and uh, delivered delivered a absolute crazy news that Mark Dooley is close to being sold. I mean, it's happening. Um, he's got his medical, I think, sometime today. That's what the tweet was saying. Uh, medical today, yeah, today. <laughs> wow, um, this news just came out of nowhere. Um, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Like always, joining, got a lot of people uh, that are live already. Please smash the like button. Let's get to 200 likes today. No jokes, we're going to have a tremendous, tremendous show here. We're going to talk about Haaland. We're going to talk about Mark Gihi, of course, Kalamans and Odoi, Chiesa interest. Apparently, there was interest, so we need to talk about what is Chelsea actually thinking around that? Um, already I can see uh, Hersey, Hersey YouTube channel uh, telling me, check uh, Mark Be Berenberg's last latest tweets. I'm not sure who that is, but yeah, um, I might have to check that out. But yeah, thank you so much, guys, for joining. As I said, smash the like button if you're here for the first time. Subscribe. Ishan, my man, how you doing? How can I do, man? This It's madness. It's madness around... I mean, I was expecting a lot from yesterday, you know, the, the stream that Yana gave photo of and, and Fabrizio Romano had. Yeah. But they gave they gave me nothing, man. Come on. I'm <laughs> Fabrizio Romano light. You gotta give me something to talk about. I, I feel I feel like we give more. I feel like we provide more. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're investigating on this more. We are getting this, you know, into in, in we're getting into this more deeper than what they are going through. <laughs> exactly. I mean uh, yeah, that's that, but then today. There's a massive news, so so let's talk about everything. Let's get things started. Hundred percent, man. I just want to quickly say, I do want to talk about the whole Fabrizio and Jan Age Fotov, uh, and we will talk a lot more during this stream. I just want to say that either Jan Age Fotov knows stuff and he doesn't want to give out too much information to Fabrizio because the stream he had with Fabrizio, and we will get onto it soon. Um, you know, it's like he, he's sort of giving indication that there is nothing that's been done at all. Whereas literally 48 hours ago, he was writing a whole heap of stuff. Chelsea's preparing yeah. a big offer, this and that. It's like, yeah. are you not willing to say that on Fabrizio's stream? And I feel sorry for Fabrizio for bringing him on. He literally <laughs> provided him nothing. Well, the one thing he provided was that Callum hudson Odoi apparently is not in his plan, not in Tuchel's plan which is interesting, and we will talk about that. There's a lot of things that's happening in social media that I want to show you guys. But we're going to start with Mark Gihi. I think this is where it needs to start. Yeah. It is a unbelievable news. I just want to share my thoughts first with the live chat, and I want to see what the live chat you guys have to say about this. I honestly thought Mark Gihi was going to be a future, a future for Chelsea even so, I thought maybe he might even be a backup this season. He might still be in the squad, being as a backup for Rudiger, because we don't have a Rudiger backup, but a natural sort of, yeah, you can say Zuma, but Zuma is not that great in a back three. Let's be honest. Let's be really be truthful about this. Yeah, he has produced some good games here and there, no doubts, but he's not looked very comfortable on the left. He's sometimes not looked comfortable on the middle. Um, I don't know whether he's played on the right, but I don't think he has. So I just naturally thought someone like Mark Gihi was going to be part of perhaps the Chelsea setup as a backup. If not, maybe goes on a loan. A Premier League loan was the next big thing for him because he absolutely ate it up in the championship. Even I started following him. 
I generally don't have the time to follow that much beyond Chelsea. As I said, get to watch Leeds a little bit here and there. But I was squeezing in some Swansea stuff and I was looking at his um, uh, you know, interviews and his press conference and I thought, honestly, this kid is a good, you know, good player, very good on the ball, great attitude, great mentality, well-spoken, looks like a serious kind of player that can shine in Chelsea. And then preseason starts. I'm really excited to see him. Out of nowhere today, Crystal Palace. This is I was reading the article um, on um, on the Athletic. Crystal Palace. Uh, you know they were looking to get a young uh, centre back, and apparently the talks were happening. You know, Magihi wasn't keen to sign a contract extension with Chelsea. Chelsea still had that clause in the contract that they could trigger an extra year. Um, which I think they were planning to, or they did, something like that. But there's some conversations that was happening, and at the end, Crystal Palace came up with 15 to 20 million. That's the price range. I mean, deep that for a second. For a player that has not laid a ball in the Premier League, that a player that has not laid a ball in the Premier League is worth 15 to 20 million pounds. Pounds. This is what Crystal Palace is about. Uh, and, and the clause goes on to say that Chelsea will have matching rights in the future and they will have sell-on uh, uh, you know, clause as well. So if Crystal Palace do end up... I've got no doubts that this player is going to be a fantastic player. I mean, God forbid that everything stays fine in terms of injuries and whatnot. If in the future, like a Man United or a Man City comes in with a big offer, Chelsea will still end up making more money. And also, Chelsea can match that if they want the player back. So it's not a foregone conclusion, but it just makes me think that maybe some of the other youngsters could start thinking this way. Yishan, I'll go to you. I mean, what was your thought process around Mark Gehi? I mean, did you genuinely think that he probably has a chance at Chelsea? Yeah, I mean, Mark Gehi is the, is the guy who, who, has, who had gone out to loan and we thought that this is the guy who you know, has the most potential out of all the loanies and especially being a defender. I I thought so. He he was one of the one of the future defenders for Chelsea. And and I thought that this was the season where he was, you know, going to get some gaming time, knowing the fact that Thiago Silva is getting more aged now and, and he won't be featuring in each and every games. And also we've got so many tournaments to feature on. So Magge he would have got his gaming time for sure. And and also knowing the fact that um Zuma is departing right eventually from Chelsea, so we are hearing that news. Yeah. So yeah, I, I'm a confused man. I don't want Mark Gehi to leave. I did not wanted him to leave by any means. But if he's if he's gone, I'm I'm really shocked. I hope there is a buyback clause or some sort of clause like that because I I really believe that that guy is going to be huge when he uh, you know becomes more mature as a player. This, this is what the this is what Chelsea has, Ishan. Um, have sell-on clause plus matching rights on the future. I can see some of the live chat asking, you know, what do we have? Do we have a buyback clause and whatnot? Um, it, it's not really, it's matching rights. So it's not really a buyback as per, per, per se on that matter. But if, if Crystal Palace do think about selling him in the future for X amount of money, let's say for argument's sake, Man United comes in or Man City comes in or whoever, comes in and says, we're going to pay 40 million. Chelsea has the right to say, I will give you 40 million and match it and we take the player. Do you know what I mean? So it's not really a buyback clause, but you can match it if you think. So it really depends. You know, if someone comes in with a huge bid of 60 million, you know, will Chelsea pay that level of money? And then there's sell-on clause uh, in, in the future. So wherever he goes, we will get some sort of commission. But you're yeah. gone, you're yeah. gone. Yeah, that, that that's what salon clause is, right? Uh, I mean, uh, people in the in your chat are, are trying to know whether we have a buyback clause or not. Uh, if it's mm. a salon clause, then it's nothing near to a buyback clause. We are not getting Mark Gehi back, right? A salon clause basically means what Miss uh, just explained that uh, we're selling now to Crystal Palace. If he develops there, and and in few years, maybe three, four, five years, if he heads to Man United or uh, the likes of Liverpool or any other bigger club where his uh, you know transfer fee is more, and and the transfer you know whatever money Crystal Palace gets out of the total transfer fee, even Chelsea gets some percentage of that. So that's exactly what uh, sell-on clause means, and and that's nowhere near to buyback clause. So if it's a permanent deal, 
I mean, that's a sad news, especially for me, because I really rated this guy and I was really excited to see how, how he would have grown. But I, I'm not sure. I mean, why would you sell the likes of, you know, Mark Gehi and, and you're not also sure about the likes of Malang Sar, what he's going to do? I don't think so. You would rate Malang Sar ahead of Mark Gehi. I think so. Uh, Mark no Gehi way. Was, has definitely better potential than what Malangsar has, and and you know talking about Mboyamba, he's he's still an academy guy. I think so. He'll he'll be there uh, for at least one or two more years, uh, tops, right? So I don't know where Chelsea going with with this defender thing. But does that give an indication, Miss, that we're going after after a big big centre back? It has to be. It has to be, Sean. Now it's all starting to make sense to me why we've been linked with a centre back. Maybe this is another reason why Mark Gihi thought. Well, they're gonna. They're looking for a centre back. What am I doing? Why am I staying here? This is the thing. Um, you know, Dills is saying I'm shocked that Marky here after sold Tomori. Does this mean we're gonna buy a new centre back? This is the thing. I think we we have to. I mean, if we're looking to sell Zuma, who's also not favoured by Thomas Tuchel, we are then definitely short of defenders. If we play the exactly. three at the back. We are definitely exactly. sure. Someone like uh, you know, uh, someone like um, Silva will not be will not be playing every game. So then you have Christensen, and then we all know Christensen has he managed to play a whole season. He's got injury sort of doubts around him as well. Um, this one from Phantom of uh, many topics. Thank you so much for the uh, super chat, my man. Uh, has Lampard been confirmed to Crystal Palace yet? Now, my man, it's Patrick Vieira. Patrick, Patrick Vieira has been there Lampard. for a couple of. I think for a couple of weeks now, and he's already now. Yeah. yeah, this is his, yeah, uh, you know, not not his first signing. I think he's already got another signing as well, another youngster that he picked out. I can't remember where from, but maybe from France. Um, but this is a uh, this is another good young talented, uh, you know, up and coming superstar in Mark Gihi. and he's because someone was saying to me, Patrick Vieira. Apparently, they, they've got eight or nine first team players, Crystal Palace, that are coming off. You know, on the and the last uh, year of their contract, so there could be a lot of players that could be leaving Crystal Palace. So, and, and it's probably ideal for someone like Patrick Vieira to come in and have his own players. But Crystal Palace, that's a lot of money, in my opinion, from their perspective. I mean, Nishan, let's talk a little bit about this. Yeah, fifteen to twenty million Crystal Palace. This player has not laid a ball in the Premier League. I mean, yeah. what does it say about Crystal Palace's belief? And Patrick Vieira, I think he's going to do some madness with uh, Margihi. I mean, Patrick Vieira was a legend uh, at yeah. Arsenal. His defensive midfield ability, box-to-box, -box, robust. Wow. I think he's going to do a bit of a madness with someone like Margi. He's actually going to, you know, give him all of those traits to be a leader in the team, to be that blockbuster defender. I mean, what do you think, yeah. man? Yeah, Patrick Vera has definitely, definitely this call out on, on this transfer. It has to be Patrick Vera. And, and you know, Mark Gehi is a talented guy. We all know that. We're, we're, we've seen his stats uh, on the past season and, and even Patrick Vera knows that. The thing is that, you know, having a new manager, even Crystal Palace have to, have to listen to Patrick Vera. You know, he the mm. new manager. Before that, they had Roy Hudson, right? So whichever whatever things that he had whatever players that he had under him they had to play under Roy Hudson by by any means right but now it's Patrick Vera and he says listen I have a, my own style of playing I ha I need my own players so they'll have multiple signings and, and it is quite evident like you said 15 to 20 million it's very surprising and it is it should be because Mark Gehi we, he's never played in Premier League right never <laughs> <laughs> and you're giving 15 to 20 million. So that I'm case, pretty sure Ross Barkley is less than that. Like I'm pretty <laughs> sure as well. <laughs> yeah. I feel so, sad for a player like Ross Barkley. He's he's actually Premier League proven. <laughs> Basically, uh to me it proves two things. Uh one, that Crystal Palace are definitely very, very much desperate to make new signings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and the likes of defenders like Mark Gehi, they, they're very desperate. Second thing is that Patrick Vera knows the talent this guy has yes. with the likes of Mark Gehi. And that's why he's not wasting any time. He might have said to the Crystal Palace board that, listen, this might charge a 15, 20 yep. minute. Get, get me him. this guy. Get him. Get him. Get me this guy. Chelsea are in a state that they've got overloaded centre-backs. They've got many yep. centre-backs. They won't be calculating what will happen a few years ago. 
let's get this man and and that's what they are doing and i think so big up to their you know transfer committee or whoever is sitting in that uh, in the boardroom deciding stuff but man ke he is will be a definitely one of the best signings for them uh, in maybe years now for crystal palace so he's definitely going to shine i'm i'm really really overwhelmed and i'm very jealous, jealous for crystal palace that they've got this guy mm-hmm. i really wanted mark gay to stay in chelsea i mean i it, i did not expect that it came out out of absolute nowhere just like miss said it's like an rko out of nowhere man out of <laughs> mid air uh, it's it's like you're going to give a swan ton bomb like jeff hardy and there comes the rko <laughs> right here to me i mean no listen on top of that you've already sold fikayo tomori right to ac milan you you already there are links that Kurt Zuma is going to leave Chelsea, right? There are mm. already links. Then you already know the fact that Thiago Silva cannot continue more than one or two years max, right? You already know the fact that Rodega Christensen have not signed their contract yet. So anything can happen. What if Rodega does not sign a new contract? What if he leaves Chelsea? Where would Chelsea go? What would Chelsea do? Right? Exactly. It's exactly. a critical situation, man. And even if you're saying that Zuma is not in the plan, Zuma is going out, neither can aspilicueta give his 100% even he's getting aged right to be very honest and and so is thiago silva we know that he he hmm. will be here for the next season but what if he he leaves after the next season i mean we're getting out of plans and buyamba is there but he needs to develop a little bit more he he's a very young guy he's in the academies i don't think so malansar i don't rate him much i mean no, I, don't, i don't think he's in the equation at yeah. all Yeah and I don't think so he would survive the the intensity of Premier League I mean mm. that the strikers like Salah Mane is going to eat him up you know so it's very difficult for Malang Sar to to get into the playing 11 as of now I mean who who who's left you know you, everybody's getting out who's left it's a difficult situation isn't it 100% man uh ladies and gentlemen we will get to the Haland news very very soon um Hersey uh, YouTube channel I have got that uh tweet out from Mark uh Beren Beck uh, so we will talk about that so stay tuned guys I just want to talk a little bit more about this whole uh Magihi thing before we move on to that because that's a big topic there's the Callum topic as well there um so lot to unpack there but before that I I still want to continue a little bit with this whole Mark Gehi I mean a live chat as well to you guys I want to ask you and, and Ishan going back to you guys I mean what's the message are we sending here to the academy I mean let's be honest here Ishan someone like Patrick Vieira has a lot more faith than than us it seems for our academy players he's Patrick Vieira is willing to splash and he must have told well obviously he told Crystal to Palace go out there and get me Magihi I've seen enough he's talented I want a young player I want to build a new team and I want to be serious in this Premier League I want it's a new regime you you let go of Roy Hodgson who's 170 years old um <laughs> yeah. you know you brought me in let's start a new sort of project together the buzzword project um and I want to do it with some young players so that they have that passion that desire and what not and all those buzzwords again so you know what's the message are we giving to the because i said it just a moment ago i was in matisse's channel i'm not sure if you've seen ishan and the live chat i was just saying that i if we're not getting world class players and it's very difficult to get world class players all the time then we need to start relying on our academy players as opposed to buying second tier because i don't want a situation like drink water i don't want a situation like bakayoko i don't want a situation like barkley and whole heap of the name continues baba rahman whoever else there's yeah. so many players that was at the cost up yeah we need to get rid of and these guys are eating our wage bill drink water is on 120,000 pounds a week and he has not laid a ball for three seasons yeah. three seasons i mean uh, ishan I, i can't believe if we i mean we've let go of you know magihi and i've got no doubt he's probably going to be a superstar i'm yeah. we better like like this comment right here i'm on football cfc can C, uh, cf candy has just said i'm honestly shocked and disappointed at this news miss the only way this can be acceptable is that top players come in this is it this is it ishan we've let go of magihi are we going to get a world class defender now are we going to get a world class defender yeah uh 
absolutely you know i'm even i'm shocked even i'm shocked there's a guy who says that uh, i don't know but he says we're a world class team and we should stop looking ahead and try to sign new players and stop mourning it's not just about that you, yeah. you don't know world class team does not mean you just buy galacticos and and just buy and sell and and sell out everybody on loan your academy is one of the strongest academies in world football you, they are not there just to you know go out for loan and then you need to utilize your academy well bro look at just, the barcelona look at the barcelona legendary team players like yeah. xavi iniesta they came yeah. from the academy even academy, look at real exactly. madrid you know raul yeah. came from the academy yeah. i'm pretty sure raul came from the academy guti came from the academy yeah. um correct me if i'm wrong life chat i'm pretty sure raul came from academy guti came from academy and you know you can't just build the whole thing with players coming in ishan so yeah sure. continue my man yeah i mean it's not about just buying good players i understand we need to we need to you know build up our team by buying good galactico players but then if your if the qualities that that new players bringing is already there in your you know in your academy or your loan players why would you you know waste your extra money as a football club yeah i'm not talking me as a fan as a fan i don't care a damn <laughs> i didn't give a damn i just, <laughs> just throw all the money and bring the best players bring mbappe halan everybody at once i don't care but then from chelsea both perspective you know if this a uh, talent that you'd want in your team if your coach says your manager says that this is a particular talent i want in my team and if that particular talent is already available in my academy or in my all the loanee players why would i need to you know buy someone from outside with the likes of 50 to 100 million pounds that makes no sense right and knowing mm-hmm. the fact that you have such a strong academy just look at the number of players uh, that are there are from chelsea academy and they've you know flow uh, gone out and and you know outshone everybody you know they they are now playing with flying colors and they are performing absolutely in top class level so that's what you want to want to see and i know that differs from a manager to a manager you know mm. maybe thomas tuckel has a part in it I, i'm not sure you know it has to be right it has to be if thomas tuckel sees that magehi uh, you know is has that potential and is you know also ishan is it is it a policy of perhaps making some money for the halan thing is is it to yeah. raise some money for that because this looks very odd to me shan this really does i feel like chelsea That's just true. found an opportunity that true. wow true. you're going to take a player that has not played in the premier league for 15 to 20 million yeah uh, we can't say no we we literally true. cannot say no to that so you know tomori sold for about 25 to 30 million euros Yeah. Magihi now so I mean are we building up the funds for this mega transfer what's your thoughts man Yeah yeah th- that that's a good shot actually that's a good shot and and that makes total sense you know because I don't see any other reasons why Crystal Palace you know Crystal Palace are buying Magihi a player who's not laid a foot in Premier League for 15 to 20 million maybe because of their desperation and their need actually actual need they have uh, in the center back mm-hmm. position that's understandable but chelsea uh, saw that opportunity you, you you may be right that it's an opportunity to to bring some funds and you know to to really actually aim on that mega transfer that we are going to do that makes sense but then i still mean i i am disappointed i i thought he's right. he was our, our future uh, you know center back i i i mean why are people this you know saying to chill out and and, and overlook this thing hell john terry was our academy player <laughs> i mean would you yeah. ever visualize john terry playing in another team no right what if we, we we would have done the same thing to john terry there wouldn't have been any john Oof. terry then in chelsea just yeah. imagine so you know you cannot neglect the academy guys you know they're highly talented and when this guy mark gehi everybody is saying that this talented you know you listen to many streamers they say the likes of mark gehi is very good then you should yeah. actually believe that he's good you know we one can be a fool, foolish guy i can be fool miss can be fool but everybody cannot be a fool right talking yeah. about this guy being good yeah. so try to believe that and i think so he'll be good you know now it also depends on how patrick vera plays uh mm-hmm. try to play him and try to mold him in crystal palace don't be surprised if he does not click or does not play well you know yeah. it, it might happen because it, uh, now once he's away from chelsea it actually depends on the crystal palace management and and uh, their coach and their atmosphere and their players and all of the stuff that how does he actually develop as a player 
But if he's actually good, I really think he'll do good. But then, you know, anything can happen. All in all, I'm, I'm very disappointed. But then the point you made is, is absolutely true that, you know, there might be some financial uh, points to this that, yeah, I think so. That's yeah, bro. I mean, at the end of the day, the offer is something that Crystal Palace just literally said, you can't say no to. You cannot say no to this offer. And that's exactly what happened. Um, it, yeah. it's, it's an unbelievable offer given to a player that hasn't kicked a Premier League ball and Chelsea is obliged. Um, and it could go to the, you know, the funds towards Holland. I don't know. We will talk about the Holland thing very, very soon. Phantom of many topics. Thank you so much once again for the super chat. No other teams want our Deadwood mistakes either. That, that's the thing. We are finding it very difficult to let go of some of our players, like even Emerson, you know, um, Marina, uh, she, she, she has high expectations. I think Napoli or one of the Italian teams have, you know, want to put a bid for Emerson, but we're asking for somewhere around 30 million pounds. They're not willing to dance in that particular figure. They're looking for somewhere around 25 or even 20. Um, similarly with Bakayoko, we're asking for a little bit more. AC Milan is willing to, you know, take this player for 5 million or something like that. So it is difficult. We, we can, And Drinkwater is one player that, that probably will have zero, zero buyers out there. Who, who in the level head would want to buy Drinkwater, which is, you know. Uh, <laughs> Nobody. I mean, Nobody. So we're stuck with that kind of mistake. This one is interesting from deals. Do you think we are trying to hijack Man United deal of Varane? You know what? I will not put this... I was actually thinking about this today. I was thinking, Chelsea is linked with centre-backs. Are we looking to perhaps hijack the Varane deal right at the end? The whole Varane situation looks like it's going towards Man United. But now with this news of Mark Gihi gone, I I'm thinking there's something happening. I'm thinking... We are serious about getting a defender, and it could be that we hijack Varane. And I, I, I don't know whether Varane fancies Man United or, or Chelsea. If you look at it, I would probably, uh, and you'd probably say I'm being biased, but if you look at it, you got Ole Gunnar Solskjaer and you got Thomas Tuchel. Like already, there's a massive difference of managerial uh, situation there. Now you can say, well, Ole is not going to last forever. He's probably going to get sacked. So whoever the next manager is, they could do madness with Man United. But we are talking about getting in the likes of Haaland. We've already got excellent superstars in our teams with Havertz, Mason Mount, so on and so forth with the European champions. Varane could easily just turn around and say, I'll probably go Chelsea. Chelsea looks like, you know, there's something interesting happening there. They could be in the, in the chance of winning many things in the coming future. So I would not put this one bit away. This is something needs to be well looked at now i think we're going to be in the mix of getting um you know someone like varano or, or a particular center back all right ladies and gentlemen let's talk about the whole hala news right now i i need to paint a good picture on this because lots lots have been talked about here so let me collate all the news together present to you guys you then comment how you want to comment and then we'll have a discussion with Ishan as well. So Ishan, uh, as I was saying, uh, you know, it, I was I was asleep uh, when when this stream was happening with Jan Age Foytov and um, and Fabrizio Romano it was 6 p.m. UK time, which is literally 3 a.m. for me Sydney time. So I'm not going to be up for that. But looking at the summary, this is the summary. It doesn't look like there's been much that's been given off by Jan Age Foytov. He's pretty yeah. much said Halan is a fan of English football. Okay, we, we kind of know, we've known that. Chelsea officials were talking about Haaland before the Champions League final. Oh, wow. Thanks for telling us something extremely new. We also knew that. <laughs> up to Roman, whether we bid. Up to Roman, whether we bid. Who else is it going to be up to? I mean, of course it's going to be up to Roman. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just makes me so irritated. No terms agreed with Haaland. Now, this is something... Some of the guys in the live chat, I remember Roby, Roby was saying this and a few other guys in the live chat were saying that the personal terms hasn't been agreed. Now, I was under the impression that Jan, uh, Jan Age Foytov mentioned something like the, the personal terms was agreed. Uh, maybe it was someone else who said it. I can't exactly remember. Maybe it was Fabrizio. But I did see something in the likes of personal terms being agreed or personal terms will not be an issue. Something around that line being talked about. So this one is, is something a bit of a news that no terms agreed with Holland. Now, whether, as we said yesterday, Sean, whether that yeah. is 
direct dealings with Halan or the or the commission that goes to Rayola and his father uh, and and Halan's father. That's something yeah. to see. So that that's an interesting point of view. This is new for me because I literally saw news from other in the nose that that has good Chelsea connection saying that Callum is not leaving, but. Jan Age Foytoft is saying Cho not in Tuchel's plan. And then he says, he finishes the whole thing by saying, safe bet is that Haaland will stay. I, I, I don't get this guy. I really don't understand this guy because I need to, I need to bring this guy's, um, I need to bring this guy's, uh, this guy's Twitter now because he's saying that the safe bet is that Haaland will stay. And literally, 48 hours ago, we're going to bring this tweet out uh, in a second. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Pretty sure we're going to see it very, very soon. Here we go. Regarding Holland, I understand Chelsea are preparing a big offer to check out the uh, check out and challenge Dortmund. He will stay here next season. The understanding is that Dortmund won't say no 275 million euros. So, I mean... I find this whole thing so strange. He said that, and then he's saying, and then he's saying, um, where is it? Here. And then he's saying that safe bet is that Haaland will stay, which is, uh, what's it say? I mean, let's talk a little bit about this before I look at the other side uh, of, of this whole situation. Ishan. He's saying that safe bet is that Haaland will stay. Is he indicating that Chelsea will not entertain 175 million euros? Mute. You're on mute, bro. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just gone. keep talking and talking. Yeah, I was saying that uh, just before you, uh, I go on to this. Uh, just check on the Fabrizio Romano's latest tweet which he just uh, you know just tweeted uh, it's the same old stale tweet it's nothing new in that regarding uh, uh, Haaland uh, to Chelsea but then it's just a thing that we should look upon because it's Fabrizio Romano Borussia Dortmund have not received any official bid yet for Haaland uh, Borussia Dortmund know about Chelsea's interest their position is clear if a crazy bid won't arrive he'll stay if yeah, a crazy so bid that, right? Uh, yeah, if Haaland stays, the race will be open to many clubs next summer. 75. Uh, before I go to you, Sean, I just want to say this. I feel like, first of all, I don't know what's happening because the whole Mark Gihi situation was so much of a secret. I feel like Chelsea works in secrecy. So the fact that we're not hearing anything from any of the Chelsea journalists, and in fact, the Chelsea journalists, the <laughs> athletic people, Matt Law, Athletic has been saying that they've not heard of any sort of crazy offers or anything that's been prepared. Matt Law was actually saying about Lukaku. Lukaku is still yeah. in the picture. Um, it's the German side. And then obviously Jan Age Foytov, and especially the German sort of, um, you know, the, uh, their, their, their publications over there, drumming up the beat and trying to raise this hype and trying to raise the price to this crazy offer I'm starting to think Chelsea's not too keen with this 175 million euros because that seems so astronomical. Can Chelsea do it? 100% they can. They have the money. Roman has the money. But I, I'm, I'm, I don't know. I feel like all of this drumming of the beat is coming from Jan Age, who's very close to the Haaland camp, and, and from Germany, who... They, they seem like they will only let go of Haaland if that big, big, huge offer comes in. What's your thoughts, Ishan? No, 100%. I mean, it, the journalist, every journalist is just recycling all the news. You know, it, there's nothing new. They're just recycling to get, you know, the attention because this is the most hot prospect in transfer uh, season now, that uh, Erling Haaland to Chelsea. I, I, I don't actually know it's getting very confusing and very irritating at this point of time that every day there is news but then you don't know actually what's happening just like you said you know this this mark gehi news out of nowhere you know definitely chelsea works behind those and then they are very secretive you know the the point is that you know it's erling Haaland 
and it's about Borussia Dortmund and it's about a German Bundesliga team. That's why we might be getting some inputs from this thing, from this transfer. But if it was a England to England transfer, we wouldn't have got anything, right? Just just look mm-hmm. at Mark Gehi's transfer. You know, it, it's just out of nowhere. So, yeah, I mean, oh, I, now it seems like there's no progression. And talking about, talking about first of all, uh, Jan Age photos, uh, Haaland updates, you know, it's all just all stale news. We knew already, you know, even yesterday we talked a lot about Erling Haaland and, and we've talked more than what Jan Age photo has talked about, basically. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people coming to this stream would benefit. Uh, would be benefited more than going there. So yeah, the, the thing that you uh, pointed out is that no terms agreed with Haaland. I think so. We've touched upon this uh, even yesterday mm-hmm. that uh, we actually don't know on which context he's saying that uh, the terms have not been agreed. Is it the all the wages and and the commission and the release cl- and the clauses and all? If that's mm-hmm. uh, if that's what you want to say about uh, the terms that then uh, it's understandable and we agree to the fact that it's not been agreed but does personal terms if we say that personal term means talking with Haaland and he wanting to join the club that's what we call as personal terms if that's being agreed I think so he would have said yes but then again you know I think so Jan Agia Fortov also might have been you know contacted by the Chelsea uh, boards and then he might have been told there is a possibility, right? That he might have been told that do not disclose anything further and and just just stay put on this because perhaps perhaps yeah, bro. I mean, because there's a chance and then he's the closest guy to this this tra- negotiation, right? He's the closest guy uh, to Erling Haaland's family and Haaland and Mino Raiola and all the stuff. So he might have been co- contacted by uh, our club and said that listen, don't do not disclose much because you know. It, Sometimes it gets out of hands, and then if situation does not work in in the future, things might become very worse, right? In terms of fans getting very disappointed, so so that's quite understandable. But then yes, uh, talking about the next thing that he said that Hudson Odoi is not in Tuchel's plans, I'm not mm. sure how uh, if I should be sure on this. Yeah, look, we'll, we'll definitely this? talk about that. We'll definitely talk about that because that's another important topic to talk about. But I want to carry on this whole saga. So Simon Phillips is saying that the reported offer Chelsea had made Dortmund for Haaland is a proposal, not official. Still no. Okay, so we're going to pause that there because I do want to now talk about this whole um, proposal. So uh, this is straight from Sky Sports um, that's saying that Erling Haaland, Chelsea's opening offer for Borussia Dortmund striker, turned down by Bundesliga side. Borussia Dortmund are determined not to sell Erling Haaland this summer. A source to the discussions told Sky Sports News Chelsea face mission impossible in their bid to sign him. The Blues offered Tammy Abraham or Kalamatan Adoy in part exchange of Haaland. Uh, Borussia Dortmund have turned down Chelsea's opening offer for striker Erling Haaland, according to Sky Germany, uh, according to Sky in Germany. Look, you know, so so off the back of that, so this is saying that there has been an offer and we were throwing Tammy Abraham and so on and so forth. Um, and then, you know, obviously many other people have come in. Uh, Mark uh, Behrenberg was saying to clarify, this is, you know, Mark, um, let's just quickly bring this in. He's a Sky Sport reporter, FC Bayern Munich, so on and so forth. So, you know, Bundesliga. So he knows, you know, more about that whole Sky Germany uh, news that I just showed you guys. To clarify, our story was there was no official bid offer for a swap deal, Halan Abraham plus money, only informal talks. So take that how you want to take that. Not not official, but informal talks. It's like it's like it's like what I'm doing right now with you guys. Informal talks. Do you know what I mean? It's not official. We're just having informal conversation. Um, Dortmund did not reject anything officially, but still, Haaland has to stay at Dortmund. Abraham, no option for Dortmund at the moment. Now, so so as, as I said, there's so much to unpack here. The whole Tammy Abraham, which we talked about yesterday, that he's so, you know, ex-employee from West Ham, so connected with West Ham and Chelsea News, saying that Tammy Abraham fancies a move to West Ham, and there could be something with the whole Declan Rice situation, for me, that makes more sense as opposed to Dortmund wanting a swap. I can't imagine how Dortmund may not even want Tammy Abraham. That's the thing. Like, they probably want pure cash. 
cash, solid cash. They probably have no interest on Tammy Abraham. And on top of that, Tammy Abraham probably has no interest in Dortmund. Tammy could say, I don't want to go to Dortmund. Don't just throw me around wherever you want to throw me. I, I want to stay in London and, you know, I want to, I want to be in the Premier League. So I, I, can't, I can't see how this could be true. Um, and then obviously Simon Phillips said that the reported offer Chelsea had made uh, Dortmund uh, uh, for Haaland is a proposal, not official. Still no official offer on the table for Chelsea as of yet. Talks are continuing though. All right, we will we will talk about the Callum stuff and the Tammy stuff, but I do want to talk a bit more about the Haaland situation. Here's my gut feeling, and I, and I want to see what you guys have to say live chat, and I'll ask Ishan as well. My gut feeling is, Ishan, that Chelsea definitely are interested in Haaland. They are. Roman does fancy Haaland, but I think we are put off by the price. I yeah. think I have a feeling inside, and I could yeah. be wrong. I have a feeling that Chelsea could be put off by that price. Dortmund are looking for a big offer, 175 million euros. Then you have Mina Royola and Alfie Haaland to pay as well. Yeah. So Chelsea could be put off by that whole situation. And who knows? Maybe, maybe when the when the release clause is half that price next season, Chelsea could agree personal terms with Haaland. Chelsea could pay him the most money and make sure that you come in because you're paying half the money. I'm just putting it out there. There, there could still be the whole situation of Mina Raiola squeezing more money out and so on and so forth. But live chat, well, let me know how you guys actually feel where this is going on. One. I think uh, I think deals uh, in the live chat said that not a single you know journalist knows what's going on. I think that's true. Chelsea keeps everything as a secret. This whole Mark Gihi one was a total secret no one knew about. So I'm pretty sure the Haaland thing is very much a secret. I think from the German side of things, they're trying to build it up so that the price can be lifted. Um, the other thing that I want to show you as well, I think uh, you know this is this is from the German camp as well, but Football Daily had. Uh, published this not that long ago, um, Sky Mark. So, yeah, th that's from Mark Behenberg. So he's pretty much saying, Borussia Dortmund will not let Erling Haaland leave this club this season. Nobody in Dortmund believes that Chelsea will offer 175 million. They're saying pounds, but it's actually euros for Haaland this summer. Tammy Abraham and Callum and so on and so forth. Um, Ishan, what's, what's your thoughts? I mean... Is the money factor the, the issue here or, or are we are we just getting worried for nothing? Uh, I mean, after all of this, after all of this hype, you know, for months now, all of this hype and interest and everything, if you end up not signing Halan and hell, if you end up not even bidding for that at least once, that will be absolute foolish. You're making a fool of everybody, right? I mean... Chelsea Football Club, what are you doing? If you knew, and you knew right from the beginning, right, that Erling Haaland is going to cost 150 million pounds tops, right? He, he, Borussia Dortmund are, are not even going to entertain anything below that sum, right? So you knew from day one, minute one, that this negotiation needs money. And that astronomical money, and it's not just the transfer fees, it's the wages, the commission, the agent fees, and all of those stuffs, right? You knew right from day one, from minute one. And these, and, and in terms of this, I think so it was very difficult to negotiate. Does not matter if we have Marina or Peter Cech or I don't know who else is there. But then this negotiation is very different and difficult to the other negotiations that we do, right? Borussia Dortmund, right from minute one, they are stubborn of the fact that 150 million is a price tag. They do not care. They do not give a damn which club comes to them and, and puts the money on the table. They just won 150 million pounds for Erling Haaland, and that's mm. it for them, right? Right. That's it from Borussia Dortmund side. Now, from the commission side, Mino Raiola is coming. That from my end, you give me a 40 million pounds, 20 for his dad and 20 for me. That's it from my end. And, and then the rest, the wages talks comes in. So even Chelsea Football Club knew, even before putting an interest on this guy, 
knew that this deal needs money right from day one astronomical mm-hmm. money if you do not plan to buy this guy if you do not have the intention to buy this guy you you do not show any sort of interest right right from day one mm-hmm. because you knew that right from day one this, this is going to be the money this is going to be the price tag this is going to be the wages and and the commissions and clauses and what not you knew that right from day one so why would you so show interest and try to do things when things are not negotiable at all right and after all of this stuff all of these things all of these build up and if you end up not even bidding <laughs> i mean i i i don't know what's happening right it's mm. very difficult to decide it's very difficult to decide but then yes maybe chelsea um, you know our board have tried to negotiate bring down the transfer value or bring down the wages talk about the clauses and stuff not uh, for months now because because the deal is very complicated right it's not easy like we try to assume it's easy but it's, but it's mm-hmm. not yes the money is very much astronomical would we be in a problem if we pay that money absolutely not absolutely mm-hmm. not we'll talk I mean, about with the sales that we are making we're we're going to be yeah. bringing money in so yeah. we shouldn't be True. an issue but the, the 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 thing is i just literally as i said i was talking to in matisse's channel ladies and gentlemen please let's smash the like button we've got over 220 people let's get the likes up to 200 let's take a moment right now um as it helps out the channel and we are on the way to 6000 subscribers so you're here for the first time subscribe as well so let's get the likes up to at least 200 straight away guys take a moment right now and uh we will continue talking about this okay so uh, Ishan, I was in Matisse's channel and there was Adam yeah. Newson, who, who's a Chelsea journalist uh, for Football London. And I, we yeah. asked him the same question and he was saying as well that, you know, it, it, Chelsea's never done a size of that manner. Do you know what I mean? He was also exactly. saying that, can they do it? Yeah, they can. But exactly. this has not been done, like, yeah. you know, in, in, in terms of English transfers, like in that yeah. s- stature. And I get it. It's Erling Haaland, so it probably deserves it. But, you know, there's always a limit to everything as well. So I've seen a few people in the live chat say, you know, we will negotiate to bring it down a little bit, of course. And that's probably what we are doing right now. We're negotiating these informal talks that's happening. But if Dortmund doesn't budge, if Dortmund are so strict on the 175 million euros that they don't want any player swaps or anything like that, they want pure cash. I'm just thinking, I don't know whether Chelsea bent over backwards for that like yeah i would yeah. like them to because someone like erling Haaland, as we've been talking in this channel will be immense for our football club will be massive for our football club yeah. so i would like to see whether this happens you know as as this particular um committee from second tech Borussia Dortmund have not received any official bid yet for Haaland. Borussia Dortmund know about chelsea's interest the position is clear if a crazy bid comes comes through that's only when it's going to happen um look we'll see exactly what happens in this particular news i do want to now talk about the kalamazan odoi situation because that is very very interesting and i'm going to show you guys why that is interesting uh meanwhile while i show these guys let's get the likes up to over 100 let's get to 200 let's seriously no no jokes let's get the likes up to 200 so i'm going to share the screen again um oh sorry I'm going to share the screen again. So we're going to go back to, I'm going to go back to, where's the, uh, as as we were saying, um, where's the, did he delete the highlights? Oh, no, here we go, here we go. Yeah, so. This was talked by Jan Age Foytoft yesterday in Fabrizio's um, stream. This was quite interesting. He said that Cho not in Tuchel's plans, right? Okay, so so keep that in mind. And then Simon Phillips, Simon Phillips said said this. As I wrote here on July 5th, Hudson Adoy won't be switching international alliances as it stands. Despite, yeah, there's a whole heap of things that's happening with the international stuff as well with Hudson Adoy, which is for a different day. Uh, reports that he's not in Tuchel's plan as it stands are also wide of mark. So Simon Phillips is saying that 
he's obviously got some people inside where he talks to um, and he's saying that now this is white of mark. But then Jan Age Foytoft replies by saying, we'll see. So he's still very confident that Thomas Tuchel, you know, ha does not have Kalamatsuno Doi in his plans, which is, I just find this whole thing strange. Ishan, I want to I want to go to you before I bring some of the some of the comments from Live Chat. Live Chat, let me know what your thoughts are around this whole Jan Age Foytov saying that Thomas Tuchel does not have Callum in his plans. Simon Phillips, who's we know he's got some inside information, saying that no, Callum is staying. And we've heard that from many journalists as well previously that no, Callum is staying. And recently we did a stream, Mishan and I, we did a stream where Callum and Ziyech, they're staying. And yeah. then Simon tweets that. And then off the back of that, Jan Age Foytov comes and responds by saying, we'll see. Ishan, I, I, I don't know what's happening with this whole Callum situation because we said it last season. He didn't get that yeah. much game time. Under Thomas Tuku, he was coming off the bench. Every now and then he was getting some minutes. Right at the end, he wasn't even getting any more minutes. Right at the yeah. end of the season, he wasn't getting in. He got substituted twice. Uh, he came on, got substituted off. Um, publicly, Thomas Tuku had said that, you know, Callum doesn't seem to show the same energy when he starts as opposed to when he comes off the bench. Um, but then we've seen many videos where, you know, Thomas Tuku grabs him by the by the head, you know, pumps his chest. They're talking. Even in the preseason, some of the videos, they look so close. Um mm. You know, we've already said with Haaland coming in, and if we still continue with the three at the back, there's going to be sacrifice to be made. And many reporters yeah. are still saying that Ziyech is not the one that's leaving. I mean, is Pulisic leaving then? Like, is someone who is getting sacrificed here? Do you know what I mean? There's Kai Havertz, Timo Werner. I mean, what, what do you think? There seems to be a clash between the two, you know, different people here in regards to Callum. Yeah, in addition to that, uh, uh, I was pointing out, I was trying to point out uh, one of the, again, tweets by Mark Berenbeck. He says, today German Sky Sports journalist Mark Berenbeck reported that Callum Hudson-Odoi has personally asked Chelsea to sanction his move to Bayern Munich. Whoa, 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 whoa. Where, where did you get this? You just just look at the tweet from, from uh, who? Mark Berenbeck. It's Mark Stevens' tweet. Mark Stevens underscore CFC. Oh, Mark Stevens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's okay. Let me bring yeah, that he up. He says that this is a report by uh, Mark Bernbeck. Um, do you see that? What, wh which tweet is it? Should I be sh sending you? I should. Oh, you, you, you share. I think you can share as well. Yeah. Yeah, I've shared. Just, just check this. Is that on the private? Yeah. Oh, as in, where, where did you share that? Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, I got you. I got you. I got you. Yeah. Mark Stevens. Fourth of the... Bro, that's a long time ago. That's a long time ago, bro. <laughs> yeah, that, 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 that is a long time ago, but it came out now, right? I, I mean, no. it, it was retweeted by somebody. Who retweeted that? That was written in 2019, bro. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure <laughs> who retweeted, who retweeted that? that. Who retweeted that? That's crazy. That's you, 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 you lot are digging out old graves. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, man, but, but yes. Yeah, yeah I, I was going to say that. Uh, I absolutely understand that the chemistry between uh, Thomas Tuchel and then Callum hudson -Odoi. In fact, We've talked this before that, you know, Thomas Tuchel, the moment he came in Chelsea Football Club, the first thing that he said that he's impre impressed most with Callum hudson -Odoi. He knew when he was in Borussia Dortmund, he was the manager there. He knew the links between Bayern Munich and Callum hudson -Odoi. The reason why Bayern Munich wanted Callum hudson -Odoi, he he actually knew that. And he knew that uh, Bayern Munich, if, if they, they got Callum hudson -Odoi, you know, Bayern Munich can really develop and, and become... Hudson Odoi can do laurels in, in Bayern Munich team. He knew that, right? So mm. the moment he came to Chelsea, he was he was very much, very much impressed with Hudson Odoi and he, he really envied him. We have seen him in the interviews as well. He's he's talking 
he talked very highly of, of uh, Hatsunoda and he praised uh, this guy a lot. He knows that this kid can grow up a lot. I don't think so. I would believe on the fact that he's not in his plans. I don't think so. And and I was absolutely shocked listening to the, you know, all the journalists and then all the rumors that uh, he's not in his plans and uh, Hatsunoda might leave because as far as Thomas Tuchel is concerned, I think so. He really, really likes this guy. We've seen that. Not just not just in his interviews. Just look at all the training session uh, videos as well, and also the post match uh, videos. Thomas Tuchel really likes this guy. Mm. The chemistry is is very much evident. I'll be shocked if Hudson Odoi leaves. Now the thing is, if Chelsea gets a big money transfer offer right from Bayern Munich regarding Hudson Odoi, would Chelsea resist that offer or not? That's the thing that we don't mm. know, right? If Bayern Munich comes out and say, "Listen, we're giving an 80 million pound, 70 million pound for uh, Kalam Hudson Doy," I'm not sure if Chelsea would able to resist that, right? And and one thing also is possible that Hudson Doy, you know, he signed a new contract, and we've seen so many journalists and reports say that he wants to fight for his place in the squad, right? We've mm -hmm. heard that, and and it's it's a it is good to hear that. But then again, you know, hearing all the journalists say that, again, some some are saying that he's not in plans and some are saying that he wants to say it's quite confusing. But then if you ask from my perspective, Thomas Tuchel really envies this guy. And I, I think so, even if he does not get the whole, you know, good game time that we all know that, you know, miss even us before a uh, few uh, streams, we, we've tried to mm. formulate the playing 11 for the next uh, season keeping a Haaland in mind, even we could not place a Hudson Odoi in that squad, right? We're overloaded with so many attackers. So yeah. that might be a point. But then that, that's the only thing. If, if Chelsea is bombarded with an 80 million or 70 million pound tra transfer offer, I think so it'd be very difficult for Chelsea to ignore that. So that's the only concern or else I do not believe even single person that Thomas Tuchel, I mean, Hudson Odoi is not in Thomas Tuchel plans. He definitely is. And Hudson Odoi, I hope he stays. He'll definitely gave some better gaming time next season. Yeah, man. I mean, there was the office for Kalamats and Adoy ages ago in Sari season from Bayern Munich, which I found very crazy at that point. You know, for a young star, I think Bayern was offering somewhere around 40 million um, euros, which was insane. And, you know, Chelsea ignored, well, didn't, you know, didn't accept that. So yeah. if you didn't accept that back then, I mean, what, what would change um you know your stance now um you know for 40 million uh, you know surely you don't all of a sudden start thinking that oh this player is not it i mean he had the injury and you know he's shown glimpses that he's still got the goods that if he gets the minutes consistent minutes he could become a very very lethal winger for us the issue is we are so stacked with such talents all over the front line it's so difficult to give yeah. someone like Callum the opportunity. Now, to think on the other side of the coin of this, I know Callum recently has said that apparently this has been, you know, touted by all the journalists that he doesn't want to go. He doesn't. But does he look at someone like Margihi and Tomori? Tomori gone to AC Milan, Margihi gone to Crystal Palace. Does he sort of start doubting that? How much minutes am I actually going to get? How sure. much minutes? Because... He's probably thinking, I want, I want regular minutes. I want to play, if, if we're playing, let's say, 60 games, I want to play at least 45. I want to play at yeah. least 45 games. I want to be able to start. I don't want always to come off the bench. I want to be able to start because that's the only way I'm going to develop. Do you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. does he sort of start thinking if there's an opportunity, if there's a club out there that, that's willing to give him that chance? And now there's whole talks about... And, and I know it's 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 apparently not true. There's whole talks about him joining Ghana and this and that. Many people are saying that it's not true. But maybe he's thinking from that perspective as well, Ishan, that England is so stacked with all these superstars. Am I ever going to get an opportunity? Do you know what I mean? Like, true, true. Yeah. Is, is he thinking that I need to think about myself? I need to make sure that I have a career. I can't just seem to be stuck in the bench and just get minutes here and there, be a squad player, which is okay. I've got no issues with that. But, I mean, Ishan, does he think in that mannerism a little bit that 
if I'm going to get to my potential, yeah, is is and and this comment here from from Jan Age, which was literally uh, on the 13th of July, like two days ago, Chelsea will yeah. partly fund new players through selling players. Three most likely to go: Ziyech, Abraham, and Hudson Odoi. I'm, I'm, I'm very uh, surprised he didn't say Mark Gihi. If he had said Mark Gihi, I would have said, oh, God, this guy knows everything. Um, yeah. The fact he didn't Actually. say Mark Gihi um, makes me think he probably doesn't know anything. Um, Nobody needs to level. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Declared actually said it that, you know, he's, he's actually suspecting Jan Age Foytov now. But look, uh, even I've Fabrizio seen... Romano missed out on Mark Gihi, to be very honest. <laughs> yes, yes, he, he seems to know everything. I mean, Ishan and the live chat as well. Question for you guys Does Callum ponder? Does Callum ponder about his future if he doesn't get enough game time? As I said, if there's 60 plus games, he would like to play at least 45. At least. Yeah. Now, does he get that? I don't know. Ishan, what's your thoughts? No, 100%. Absolutely. Before I touch on that point, let me quickly talk about this Yanage photos claims about Chelsea players. I mean, the live chat is bang on. You know, they are saying that how can we, you know, believe 100% on Nya, Nyanage Fotov when he's not been very much focused on Chelsea Football Club for the yeah. past many years, right? I mean, it's just out of nowhere. Absolutely true. And the thing with Hudson Odoi here is, I, Yanage Fotov looks very confident when he's talking about Hudson Odoi that he's very much confident that he's going to leave Chelsea and yeah, to join he's the Yeah, he's so confident. I mean, we'll see. I, I, you, you see that attitude in that reply? I know. Like, yeah. I know. I spoke yeah. to Thomas. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> that's the arrogancy that he has and that's the confidence that he has uh, regarding Hudson Odoi joining a German club. And, and that's kind of concerning me. That Does he actually know that much that will Bayern sign actually? You know what, well, Vishan? That is a little bit like... Why would a journalist put themselves out there? Like, why Simon Phillips is not really like he's not a like a journalist. Journalist. Yeah. He's, he's he's someone yeah. who collates. He's, he's a he's a blogger. Like he blogs. He's yeah. a Chelsea blogger. He does have his pieces as well, of course. But he's not one of those Chelsea correspondents. He put something out there, and then Jan Age came in to comment on that. He could have just ignored it. Why did he have to comment? Yeah, exactly. I just. Look at the audacity of him coming and say, "We'll see." <laughs> I mean, what do you mean? You, you're his dad, or what? <laughs> you will see. Man. <laughs> Come on, you can't. You can't be that confident, right? I, I mean, you're challenging one other reporter as well. So uh, that that's something, you know. And and yes, Jana Gifotov has some connection with German club, and we all know that. So maybe that's one reason why maybe he knows some things inside, and maybe he knows the fact that. Bayern Munich are planning for something big, uh, an offer which Bayern Munich, uh, which Chelsea might not be able to reject. Maybe Jan knows that. So, and I think so. That's why he's very much confident that I, I'm, I'm talking about that perspective. I'm not saying saying that that's hundred percent true, but that might be the case. That he, mm. there has to be a reason, right? Why he's so much confident? It cannot be that out of nowhere he's so confident. There has to be a reason bold behind Bold confidence. Bold yeah, confidence. That is way too he's much confidence. He's putting himself out there. If he's wrong, like, yeah. I'm, I'm already doubting a little bit about him. Like, I know yeah. we said that he's the closest to the Halan family, which is true. He is the closest to the Halan family. He's not even he's... confident about Halan that much. He's confident about Hudson Odoi. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> he's the, the thing that we need to understand. He's close to the Halan family, not Chelsea family. He's exactly. not close to the Chelsea. He yeah. ha probably has no idea from the Chelsea point of view. Yeah. We know the people that generally have ideas about Chelsea point of view, and even they are quiet. Even they are quiet. And as I said, have a look at what Simon Phillips. Um, uh, sorry, Simon Phillips. Simon Johnson has been reporting in the Athletic. Have a look at what Matt Law is talking about. These guys repeatedly are saying Lukaku is not dead. Yeah. And and Simon Johnson goes on to even talks about Danny Ings. I, I find that pretty crazy. But th th these are the people that are bringing the Chelsea news. Jan Age Forte does not bring Chelsea news. He does bring. The Haaland kind of side of things, so I, or the Bundesliga side of things. So, very interesting. Phantom of many topics. Thank you so much once again for the super chat. Okay, Cho and Tuku equals love, but why is Tammy 
acting very happy. <laughs> I'm not sure what that even means. Um, but, he was yeah, very acting. He was very happy when he went to the transfer. I mean, the training ground for the first time uh, after. Oh the yeah, okay. So that's what you mean, Phantom Author. Yeah, look, that's another strange thing that I found. Honestly, I, I thought for a player that doesn't get played that much by the manager, he was full hugging the manager and everything. I thought, are they good mates or something? Maybe they'll patch things up. Maybe he's back on the. I don't know. Look, let's talk a little bit about the Tammy thing. Yeah, this is where I feel like the German publications have got this so so wrong, and this is where I'm starting to think Jan Age does not know everything. He does not know everything. No way that we can think that he knows everything. He's saying that maybe Tammy could be up for grabs or Callum. He did throw Ziesch. Ziesch could be, but once again, many reporters are saying Ziesch is staying, uh, which is the Chelsea reporters are saying Ziesch is staying. I rather believe Chelsea reporters. The whole Tammy thing, it makes more sense with the West Ham, doesn't it, Isha? London club, staying yeah. at London, and the whole relationship to build with West Ham with Declan Rice. True. Do you know what I mean? West Ham wants a striker. David Moyes has seen Tammy Abraham. Yeah. Tammy Abraham is proven in the Premier It makes sense. For someone like Dortmund, they're probably not even watched Tammy Abraham. They wouldn't even know anything about him. And they don't even want him. So, and, and the reporters today saying that Tammy Abraham thing is all, that's not true. So, I mean, Nishan, would you agree from that point of view that Tammy Abraham is definitely not part of any of this uh, Haaland deal? No way. No way. And I, I've told that right from day one, right? That Dortman wants cash. It's absolutely clear. Dortman wants cash. They might be interested in Haaland, uh, I mean, uh, in Tammy Abraham. Looking at Tammy's oh, stats and his talent, maybe he, he might be interested, and Tammy might be, uh, you know, very valuable valuable to them. Them, if Tammy goes out to Bundesliga, he might, uh, you know, outshine. But but the thing is, Haaland and Tammy and Chelsea and Dortmund, no connections at all. I think so. Tammy, just like you said, it absolutely makes sense if if Tammy goes to West West Ham, and and that would you know solve every puzzle for West Ham as well, right? They they mm -hmm. do need a striker. Yeah. They, do need a Tammy kind of a striker, so it'll be a yeah. it'll be absolutely perfectly suited for mm. uh, West Ham. Uh, to Dortmund, I don't think so. It might have been something like that that it might have been proposed to Dortmund that listen, if you want one fifty million pounds, so why not maybe take a hundred and a Tammy or or something like that. It might have mm. been the case, mm. but I don't think so. Dortmund would entertain that even a bit. I mean, mm. they it, it's Erling Haaland. I mean, they they know that. You know, this guy has to go. If he goes now, he has to go out with some astronomical amount of money and, and nothing less than 150 million. We all know what Borussia Dortmund's standpoint is regarding Erling Haaland. They only want cash. And and we've seen that with Hakimi deal as well, right? I, I think so. Chelsea yeah. has yeah. not even given a single bid. Why? Maybe because yeah. they were always trying to push for a cash plus uh, player deal. Player. And yeah. that's exactly what uh, Fabrizio yeah. Romano said, right? And And... They eventually ended up not even giving a single bid for Hakimi, and true, that's true. how it goes. Why? Because they've al always been waiting and trying to have that cash plus player deal, and it never went on. The, the Similarly, cash plus player deals, Ishan. Apparently, it's it's not something yeah. that's not common, man. It it doesn't yeah, happen. It does not happen. It does not happen. It's difficult, and especially with this big money signings, it does not happen. You know, with the likes of. Uh, Hakimi or a Haaland, it, it does not happen. We all know that. Even in Inter Milan, we were very confident to the fact that they want money, right? If they're yeah, yeah. selling Hakimi, they want money. And then PSG were very much happy to give them the 70 million that they need. And they give them, so Hakimi is in PSG. Chelsea was, you know, trying to do the combination gameplay there, money per plus player and all those stuff. So that did not work. And it won't work. It will definitely not work against Haaland. It does not happen. I, I know, you know, from, from a layman's point of view, we all would say that why would Dortmund uh, decline a, a cash plus Tammy plus a Hudson Odoi? You know, that's kind of funny to decline that. But yes, that's the only thing, you know, Dortmund wants money. And because that, they'll, they'll do their own scouting. They'll do their own yeah, scouting. They they'll have their own scouting. Their own player. Yeah, maybe the manager does not want uh, this kind of, you know, transfer. Maybe this is not what the their board ones the manager also has their own preferences so i it's difficult and then yeah 100% agree tammy has has 
I mean, he might have been part of, of the proposals or the talks or the informal talks that we say, but I don't think so. There will be a player plus cash deal anyways. Mm -hmm. No, for sure, man. Declare, thank you so much for this super chat. Maybe Cho plus cash offer to Dortmund was real and Yan got a sniff of it. Decided to change the rumor to give to not give uh, Haaland stuff uh, respect to his friend. Maybe, man. Maybe I'm looking at some some other comments as well. Uh, you know, Anav saying, "Are we taking Yan Age way too seriously?" Once again, I'm 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 starting to starting to think this. This one is a very interesting comment. Just playing devil's advocate, Yan may have links with Tuchel's camp, German and Bundesliga links. This. This, this is a cheeky, cheeky comment, TK13. This, this reminds me very, of Haaland's grin. <laughs> yeah, know? this this is a very cheeky comment, man. You know, as Ishan said, the man is so bold to go into Simon Phillips' tweet, which he did not even get tagged. So I'm not even sure how he saw that. He probably, <laughs> I mean, he probably follows. I mean, how many people does Yanage follow? Let me have a look how many people he follows. Jan Age follows. Jan Age Foito follows two thousand six hundred and thirty-four people. Jan Age follows two thousand six hundred and thirty-four people, and he saw Simon Phillips's tweet. Out of all of that, unless he has Simon Phillips on notification, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he literally went on Simon Phillips's tweet and said, "We'll see." Yeah. Like, as Ishan said, it's so arrogant, it's so bullish, it's so bold. Maybe this has something to do with it, that maybe he has links with Tuchel's camp. Maybe, I, yeah. I don't know. I really don't know, um, which is crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, we've got over 200 people still here. Let's get the likes up to at least 200, guys. Take the opportunity right now. We will wrap things up very, very soon. But let's take the opportunity right now to get the likes up to well over 100. Let's get to 150. Um, helps the channel out, helps the video out a lot. And to all the people that have given Super Chats as well, thank you so much for always helping the channel out, supporting the channel. We are on the road to 6,000 subscribers, very, very close now. Um, let's get, if you're here for the first time, subscribe as well. Um, oh, we've got PYS in the house. Yes, 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 yes. What's my man's got to say? Let's have a look. What's up, boys? Thoughts on guest sale? 20 million reported fee. Great price, to be honest. Yeah, Gihi, um, I literally... Um, PYS, I read it in the article because uh, I've got the article um, and it's apparently somewhere between 50 to 20 million. So, you know, I, th I think that's a, a so yeah, the, the report says that Crystal Palace has provided something that Chelsea can't say no to. And to be honest, you can't. Mark Gihi has not kicked a Premier League ball and he's worth 15 to 20 million pounds, which is insane. Absolutely insane. So, you know, and maybe maybe Chelsea's just gathering those funds. Chelsea's looking that look, Rudiger's going to sign the contract extension most likely. Christensen's going to sign the contract extension. We're still going to have uh, Aspilicueta. We're still going to have Rhys James. We're still going to have Thiago Silva. Um, we are still in the market for a defender. Maybe Zuma leaves. Um, you know, it could be very much that that they saw an opportunity to make some money. And this is very good money. I'm unhappy. I'm not happy because I seriously thought Mark Gehi would be part of this team, this squad, yeah. at least. If not this season, at least next season, maybe he would have got a loan. But maybe Mark Gehi saw all of this news as well. And this is the thing. Uh, someone uh, commented in the live chat not that long ago, Nizar. Let's bring that out. I'm actually going to bring that Nizar Kinsella. Let's see what Nizar has to say. Um because someone someone put a put a tweet here saying that maybe we're gonna start seeing more of these players. Here we go. Uh close matching defender, great year. Da, 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 da. What else did he say? Someone said um that Nizar wrote that we're gonna see can't see this tweet unless he said it somewhere else. Anyway, um apparently Nizar had commented that we're probably going to see more youngsters like that leave. We're probably gonna see more more of these people. Uh, you know, Tino Livermento has not. <laughs> signed a contract extension and come January he's going to be able to do that so it's very much um, likely that that this is this is going to be a bit of a situation for Chelsea down the track with more youngsters all right ladies and gentlemen to wrap things up 
Mark Gihi, medical today, is off to Crystal Palace, somewhere around 15 to 20 million. Apparently, there's rumors that we've put in, well, informal talks about Haaland and, you know, talks are still happening. I'm not really sure what is the talks at the moment. Jan Age Foytov, I'm getting some mixed sort of information. He's saying safe bet that Dortmund stays. We need a big offer. Kind of feels like Chelsea's not willing to, you know, play around that big offer. Um, and then, you know, Jan Age talks about Callum Antonodoy, which is, you know, something to think about, that he's so confident that Callum's not in the plans. He's so, so confident. So, ladies and gentlemen, let me know what your thoughts are around this whole thing. We, I did want to talk about Chiesa, but we maybe might talk about Chiesa. To be honest, that, that's not a full story, but Fabrizio Romano did tweet that. Uh, but we may talk about that down the track some other time. But, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much. Please smash the like button before you go um, and hit the, hit the bell notification to keep in touch with all the content. If you're here for the first time, subscribe. Um, and, uh, yeah, check out Ishan's socials in the description right now. Until next time, everyone, take care and see ya.